A gate of mass mkg is hung as shown by a wire at the end. So this is the wire at the end and is supported by two hinges. So we have a hinge here and a hinge here. So you have two hinges. Draw the free body diagram. Write the equation of motion. Ignore horizontal force components and friction. Assume net force is zero. The following forces act on the mass. The normal forces from the hinges, N1 and N2, act vertically up on the mass. The gravitational force W equals mass times acceleration due to gravity is vertically down. The tension T in the rope acts vertically up. Welcome to hdtvedu.com, direct and simple education in seconds. You watch and learn. You do and learn, you play and learn, you pause and learn. Isolate the non-zero mass. Define positive x, negative x, positive y, negative y. Draw all forces acting on this isolated mass. Break it into vertical and horizontal components, x and y components. Indicate the direction of acceleration, if any. We are told that the tension force is vertically up. And even if you are not told, we know it should be vertically up. Why? Tension is a pulling force. If you tie a rope at this point, the rope does not push on the object. It actually pulls on the object. So what is the direction of pull? Vertically up. So tension has to be vertically up. Gravitational force acts vertically down. And we are told that we have two normal forces from the hinges. So we have N1 and N2. Assume they are vertical. Sometimes I cannot draw vertical lines. How many forces are along positive Y? Normal force N1, normal force N2, and tension. What acts along the negative y direction? Gravitational force mg. So if you're told that net force is zero, then force up has to be equal to force down, right? So you say n1 plus n2 plus t. Those are all forces acting along positive y. And that should be equal to gravitational force acting vertically down gravitational force acting vertically down. So our free body diagram is going to look like this. You have normal force N1 acting vertically up, normal force N2 acting vertically up, tension acting vertically up, and the sum of all those three lengths should be equal to the gravitational force arrow acting vertically down four forces tension t is vertically up tension t is vertically up normal forces n1 and n2 are vertically up so we have t n1 and n2 they're all acting vertically up what acts vertically down just the gravitational force so by common sense Sum of all forces vertically up should be equal to sum of all forces vertically down. Tension T vertically up, normal forces N1 and N2 vertically up, gravitational force down. So you say T plus N1 plus N2 should be equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity, the gravitational force. So here is the scenario. You have tension acting vertically up, normal force N1 acting vertically up, normal force N2 acting vertically up. What acts vertically down? The gravitational force. All right, so if you put all three forces against the gravitational force arrow, the length should add out to be exactly the same. So force up equals force down. So tension plus normal force N1 plus normal force N2 equals mass times acceleration due to gravity. Net force by vector sum, forces along positive x should be positive, negative x should be negative, positive y should be positive, negative y should be negative. We don't have to worry about positive x and negative x. 
We are told to ignore the horizontal components. We are also told that net force is zero. So we only have to worry about the vertical forces. And what are the vertical forces along positive y? Tension, positive y. Normal force N1, positive y. Normal force N2, positive y. Those three act vertically up. Gravitational force, on the other hand, is negative. So you have plus negative mg, or you say T plus N1 plus N2 is equal to mg. And this is George Matthew signing off. Good luck.